a $20 billion underground metro is being built beneath Bali, set to stretch 60 kilometers across the island. To dig through its volatile volcanic rock and unstable limestone, engineers are deploying 10 massive tunnel boring machines, each one nearly as wide as a city bus and capable of carving tunnels 30 meters deep. Far deeper than most skyscrapers are tall, with the power to excavate millions of cubic meters of earth, these giants will transform the island's infrastructure. But with such a colossal undertaking, can this cutting-edge technology handle Bali's unpredictable geology? Or will the machines buckle under the pressure of the island's unique terrain? For decades, Bali has been the world's dream destination. But that dream has turned into a nightmare of gridlock. After the world reopened, tourists flooded back with visitor numbers surging to over 5 million a year, pushing toward pre-pandemic highs. This boom has put an impossible strain on the island's small roads. In just 13 years, the number of private vehicles exploded by over 200%, a growth rate that far outpaces the population. The result is total paralysis. A short trip from Kangu to Uluwatu can now take two agonizing hours, so long that some tourists are now taking boats to get between beaches just to avoid the traffic. During peak season, the chaos reaches a breaking point, with viral videos showing travelers abandoning their cars and sprinting for kilometers down toll roads just to catch their flights. The idea of a railway in Bali is not new. It has been a recurring dream for over a decade, with proposals for island-circling trains and high-speed links appearing as far back as 2011, only to fade away due to logistical and financial hurdles. But the current crisis has made the dream a necessity. The obvious solution would be to build bigger roads or elevated skytrains, but in Bali, you can't simply build your way out of the problem. A deeply held spiritual philosophy called Tri Hita Karana guides life on the island, demanding a sacred balance between humans nature and the divine. This belief is written into law. There is a strict rule that no building can be taller than a coconut tree, about 15 meters high. This sacred barrier makes building elevated railways across the island culturally impossible. With no way to build up and no more room to build out, engineers were left with only one terrifying and fantastically expensive option. To go down. The plan, officially named the Bali Urban Subway, is a monumental undertaking. It's a four-phase master plan that will eventually stretch over 60 kilometers, a distance similar to driving from one end of a major city like Singapore to the other, but all of it will be underground. The first two phases are already underway. Phase one will be a 16-kilometer line connecting the bustling Ngura Rai Airport to the popular tourist hubs of Kuta, Seminyak, and finally Chemagi, with a target completion date of 2028. Phase 2 will create another 13.5-kilometer line from the airport, branching south to Jimbaran and the luxury resort area of Nusa Dua, set to be finished by 2031. Later phases will push the network further, connecting Kuta to Sanur and eventually reaching the cultural heart of the island, Ubud. Once running, the system is designed to operate 24 hours a day, with electric trains arriving every 10 minutes and hitting speeds of up to 100 kilometers per hour in the tunnels below. To carve out this network, engineers are unleashing an army of mechanical monsters. Between eight and 10 massive tunnel boring machines, or TBMs, will be brought to the island. To understand the scale of this operation, the entire Jakarta MRT system was built using just two TBMs. Bali is using four to five times that number. These machines are titans of the earth, each with a cutting head measuring 7.2 meters across, wider than the ones used in Jakarta and large enough to carve a tunnel that could fit two large SUVs side by side. Starting in April 2025, this fleet of TBMs will begin digging 30 meters below the surface. That's as deep as a 10-story building is tall, all buried beneath the temples, rice paddies and villas. This aggressive strategy of using so many machines at once is a huge gamble, designed to finish the project as fast as possible before the traffic crisis gets even worse. These TBMs are essentially subterranean factories on rails. As the giant cutting head rotates and grinds away the earth, the excavated material, or muck, is transported backward through the machine on a conveyor belt, while hydraulic arms simultaneously install massive pre-cast concrete segments to form the tunnel lining behind it. 
but getting these giants into position is a mega project in itself. Each TBM, weighing hundreds of tons, must be disassembled into manageable pieces, shipped across the ocean, transported by specialized trucks over Bali's small roads, and then painstakingly reassembled inside a massive launching pit dug into the ground. Coordinating a fleet of 10 TBMs operating at the same time is an immense logistical challenge. It's an underground ballet where a single machine getting stuck or breaking down could create a bottleneck, delaying the entire multi-billion dollar project. But what these machines will face in the darkness is the project's greatest challenge. The geology beneath Bali is a treacherous and unpredictable mix. Along the route for phase one, the TBMs will have to grind their way through what geological surveys describe as extremely hard volcanic breccia, a type of rock formed from ancient volcanic eruptions that is incredibly dense and abrasive. This is like trying to drill through concrete that has been reinforced with jagged, super hard rocks. This rock will fight back, slowing progress to a crawl and chewing through the TBM's expensive cutting heads. But for phase two, the challenge is the complete opposite. The route south to Nusa Dua runs through soft, unstable limestone and alluvial soil. Here, the danger isn't hard rock, but the risk of the ground itself behaving like a thick liquid, a condition known as running ground, which could collapse and swallow the multi-million dollar machines whole. The engineers will have to use two completely different tunneling strategies to conquer two completely different geological enemies. And if that wasn't dangerous enough, there is another, even bigger threat lurking just off the coast. Bali sits directly on the Pacific Ring of Fire, one of the most seismically active regions on the planet. The island is under constant threat from the Flores Thrust Fault System, which is capable of generating massive earthquakes and tsunamis. Building a tunnel here is not like building one anywhere else. The tunnels can't just be rigid concrete tubes, they must be engineered to survive a catastrophic earthquake. While the final designs are still being refined, they will likely have to meet or exceed the standards of the Jakarta MRT, which was built to withstand a magnitude 8 earthquake. This requires building the tunnel linings with special flexible joints and using a principle called ductility which allows the structure to bend and deform under stress without snapping, much like a paperclip can be bent back and forth without breaking. The stations themselves, especially those near the coast, will have to be designed like watertight submarines. They will need massive floodgates that can seal the entrances to protect the entire system from a potential tsunami wave that could be up to six meters high. The lifeline of this underground network will be its tracks and trains. The system will use a 1,435 mm standard gauge double track, the same international standard used for modern high-speed rail systems around the world. This is a smart, future-proof choice as it opens up the project to a wide range of global train manufacturers, ensuring competitive pricing and access to the latest technology. Each train is planned to have six carriages, carrying around 240 passengers at a time. While a final supplier for the trains hasn't been chosen, the project's main construction partner is China Railway Construction Corporation, or CRCC, the same company behind Indonesia's Wush High Speed Rail. This makes a Chinese manufacturer a likely candidate, possibly offering a version of their advanced metro trains used across Asia. However, global engineering giants like Germany's Siemens and France's RATP Group have also expressed interest bringing their experience from building metros in cities like Bangkok, Kuala Lumpur and Paris to the table. Siemens's Inspiro platform, for example, is known for its lightweight, energy-efficient design and can be customized for everything from seating layout to the level of automation. The stations themselves are planned to be more than just transit hubs. They are envisioned as unique destinations that reflect Balinese culture. The design will be guided by the Trihita Karana philosophy, seeking harmony between people, nature, and the divine. This means architects will likely incorporate traditional Balinese design principles, such as the tri-mandala concept, which divides space into sacred, intermediate, and outer zones. We can expect to see the use of natural materials, open-air concepts, to blend the stations with the surrounding landscape, and artistic elements that pay homage to the island's rich heritage creating a travel experience that is uniquely Balinese from the moment you step off the train. But even if the engineers can conquer the violent geology beneath Bali, a bigger question remains. Can the island afford this project, 
and at what cost? The total price tag for all four phases is a staggering 20 billion US dollars, with the first two phases alone costing 10.8 billion. What makes this project unique for Indonesia is its funding. It is being paid for entirely by private companies on a business-to-business -business basis, with no money or financial guarantees from the Indonesian government. A consortium of investors, led by PT Bumi Inda Prima, is taking on all the financial risk. They are betting that the project will be profitable, not just from ticket sales to millions of tourists, but from developing the land around the new stations into hotels, shops and restaurants. However, the project is not without its critics. Some worry that this massive construction project will damage the island's fragile environment, pointing to Bali's existing struggles with waste management and water shortages as problems that need to be solved first. Others fear that the subway, built primarily for tourists, will accelerate gentrification, causing property prices to skyrocket and forcing local people out of their own communities. There is a deep-seated concern that this mega-project could erode the island's unique cultural identity, turning it into just another commercialized tourist hub. The groundbreaking ceremony in September 2024 marked the official start of this monumental challenge. If the engineers and investors succeed, the first trains could be running by 2028, offering a vision of a modern, sustainable Bali that has managed to solve its traffic crisis while respecting its ancient traditions. But the path to that future is filled with immense geological, engineering, and financial risks. What do you think? Is this $20 billion gamble the only way to save paradise, or will it destroy the very soul of the island? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you love learning about incredible engineering projects like this one, make sure to like this video, subscribe to Ultimate Mega Builds, and turn on notifications so you don't miss our next story.